I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how routes and templates work, template bindings work in Bolt. So I think the easiest way to understand this is for me to just walk you through each step of the process to actually render a page. In Volt, unlike Rails, for example, views are nested, and they can be nested as many times as you want. So you don't just have a layout and a view file. You actually can have any number, a view that has any number of other views rendered inside of it, sort of like how a render works in, in Rails, except that that's also how layout is handled. So by default, we always load up the main uh, main slash main inside of a component, and then that renders this template. So I'll come back to that in a sec. Let me actually talk through the four steps. Basically, we start out with a URL, and then our routes let us map that into parameters. And then we use our parameters to gen generate what's called a path string, and we pass that to the template binding, and the template binding looks at the path string and then decides which view file to render. And then that will go ahead and load up a controller and a view, and we'll render that on the page. So in a way, controllers, you know, in Rails, you have controller and action, and that decides what gets rendered. In Volt, the path string is actually what's responsible for deciding what to render, and you can kind of change that as you want. We basically start with main, which is sort of like your layout, and then it renders all the way down. So let me show you this in detail. First, let's talk about how we go from URL to parameters. And if you're not familiar, in Vault, parameters are the collection that, that lets you read and write URL parameters. So here I say I want to bind this field to the name property on the parameters collection. And then if we go ahead and load up the page, and we can see that if I type, type in here, you can see that the name parameter is being updated on the URL. And so it's bound to this field. And the it works both ways. So if I change the parameter and I hit enter, it's going to update the model as well. So what we can do with routes is we can actually say, I want to take one of these properties or multiple and put them in the URL itself. So here we might say, I want anytime user slash something comes up, I want to map that into the name property of params. And so we can go, we actually right now have to restart our server, which is, we'll fix soon. And then if I hit something like this, user slash Ryan, it's going to map to Ryan. And so we actually use this to assign our controller and our actions. So if we look here, you can see I've got this, this URL that says, um, you know, match slash about. So you'll notice that the second argument here is what to assign the params to. So when I hit them, when I hit a URL or when I click a link, it's going to look and say, okay, they want to go to slash about. So so if this if this matches, it's going to go ahead and assign the parameters to ac the action property of the params to about. Down here, if I go to slash sign up, it's going to assign controller of on params to user templates and action to sign up. And it works the other way. So if we change the params, say I change the params to action about, it's going to anytime I change the parameters, it's going to look through each of our each of our routes and top to bottom, and then match the first one that has all of these matching. So if I had controller set to user templates and action set to login, it wouldn't match this one because they're not exactly the same. It would match this one. However, if I had controller set to main and action set to about, you can think of these more as constraints instead of being exactly the same. So since the only constraint on here is action has to equal about, it's going to match it as soon as action equals about. And I can have some other parameters set and it will basically ignore those. So you might do something like, if you got a blog, you might say blog and set the controller to the blog controller and action to index. And then you can also place um, place parameters in the URL itself. So you might say, I want to match the ID and 
then it's when it does match, it's going to take whatever's here and set that to the ID on params and set the controller to be blog. So now that you can hopefully see how routes take you from a URL to a parameter and vice versa, the next step of the pipeline is going from parameters to a path string. And so what we want to produce is a path for our template binding because our template binding is going to render the render a view based on that path. So in our main controller here, you'll notice we have this main path method. And, and this is set up by default on all projects. You can actually change how this works, but this is kind of the standard way. And so what it's doing is saying get the controller property, there, get the controller parameter, and if that's not assigned, assign it to main, and then slash the action property on params, and if that's not assigned, assign it to index. And so what we end up getting is this returns something like, for example, if we went to slash about, it's going to return main slash about. So then if we look in our main HTML file, which is rendered by default every time the page is loaded, we're going to say we've got this template binding, and it says render main path, whatever the path is. So it's going to call main path, and then that's going to return some path. And then template bindings have this lookup algorithm to find what view file they have. It's really simple. I'll explain it in a second. But basically here, it's going to, if we add main slash about, it's going to look in views and it's going to see, it's going to look for the main folder and then the about file, about view file. And if that's there, the first thing it's going to do is look for the correct controller. So the controller is always the folder name of, that the view file's in and then underscore controller. So it's going to load main controller and then it's going to call the name of the view file. It's going to call a method for that. So it's going to call an about method on the main controller if one exists. And so you can use that to basically set up anything it needs to render the file. And then, then it's going to actually render the template. So inside of main, it's going to render view, or it's going to render the about file if we went to slash about using routes and parameters. And what's neat is if the URL changes or they click a link, which is also going to, re to process against the routes, it's going to change the parameters. And then reactively, this method's going to become invalidated. And so the template binding knows it needs to run it again on the new data, and you're going to get a new path, and it's going to render a new view. And so as soon as any of the parameters that main path depends on change, it's going to get a new path, and it's going to render the view. And so it's going to remove the old one, set up a new controller, and then render it. So the last thing that I briefly mentioned was the template binding lookup algorithm. So let me show you real quickly. I've got a demo app that I did. So this demo app lets me show how we go from a template path to actually loading up a template. So here you can think of this field as basically the value you'd pass into the template, the first parameter, which is the path. And then we're actually working in this as the demo project. So there's a CMS component, which has an, an edit and index file. And then there's a blog controller inside main which has edit and index, and then there's main, inside main, which has about index and main. And so to start with, it's always going to load up main.html. You can kind of think of that as your layout. And then inside of there is a template binding. And so this is using the same controller action setup that, that we had before. And one thing that's interesting is the lookup path is relative to the current template. So since we're rendering inside of main, this will kind of show how it actually does the lookup. So if the only path we passed in was, was index, then it's going to look and say, it's going to look in order until it matches one of these. So it's going to say, for my current component, my current view folder, my current view file, which would be main, main and main, is there a section? And in Vault, sections look like 
like this is a title section and this is a body section. So it's gonna say, is there a section called index? And there's not, so this one fails. And then it's gonna say, in my current component, in my current view, in my current view folder, which is main and main, is there a file called index? And there is. So then it's gonna go ahead and load up the default section, which is body. It's gonna load and show that. And you might've noticed too that inside of here, the second argument is which section do we pass in? So for the title, we want the title section and for the body, we want the body section. Body is the default, so we actually didn't have to pass that in, but we do here. Next, let me show you some more complicated examples. So about is exactly the same. For blog, we're saying load main slash blog. And so what it's doing is it says, okay, is there a view file in my current directory, which is, main, which is this main folder? Is there a view file called main? There is, does it have a section called blog? It doesn't, so we move on to the next one. It says in the main view folder, uh, in the main component, is there a view file called blog? There's not, so we move on. Then it says, okay, let's look and see in the main component, is there a view folder called blog? And there is, because there's also a blog controller. And then it says, then it knows to load the default, which is index. So it'll load index and it'll load the body section inside of index. Lastly, let's look at loading another component. So here we're just passing in CMS. So it's gonna try a whole bunch of things. It's gonna look for a section, for a view file, for a view folder, and none of those exist. So it's gonna look at the component level and say, oh, okay, there is a CMS folder. Does it have, and this I actually have a little backwards. This, this should be labeled as main. Um, this, this screenshot's out of date. So it's actually gonna look and say, is there a main folder? Yes. Is there an index file? Yes. And then render the body template. So hopefully that kind of shows you, um, and this is, this is edit. So if we passed it CMS main edit, it's gonna go ahead and know to go to here. So this, this program I'm gonna put online and you can kind of play with it. And hopefully that'll give you a better sense of how the path matching algorithm works or the, the path path string lookup algorithm works. The idea is to be able to quickly pass in this string and, and get what you're looking for. One thing too that might not be clear is the reason we do this path matching algorithm is so that it's easy for other components to override views that they want to change. So say I have my user template uh, I can easily, in my own component, override the user template in another component. So hopefully down the road I'll do another video tutorial explaining this. If you look at the pagination video, it talks about this a little bit, but that's kind of the reason for the way the lookups start with this simple path and then kind of move up looking for that file. So again, just coming back to here, the way, this, the way we render things is we go from URL to parameters, parameters to the path string. The template binding takes that path string and then loads up the controller in view and it gets rendered. And anytime the URL changes or one of the used parameters, it cascades down and things get removed and then rendered. it renders the new one. So hopefully that's helpful. Feel free to ask me any questions if, if you're not sure on anything. Thanks.